Shout out to Arctic for providing this unit for review. Keep in mind this is a low budget cooler, but it comes with a radiator that you'd expect with a custom water cooling kit. It's about 40 millimeters thick, about twice as thick as the radiator that came with my T730, which is, you know, a $2,400 computer. This little cooler has twice as thick of a radiator. So, what gives Lenovo? And on that radiator is the fan, which actually looks very static pressure optimized, very clean, very, very silent. In fact, here is an audio clip of it during video rendering for 20 minutes straight. Now let's go on down the line, or lines I should say, and the tubes themselves are actually wrapped in this black and silver design that looks very sleek. And you can notice the little fan wire from your 120mm fan running down the tubes and right into the pump block, which is great because you don't have to use a fan header for your fan. Well, the block itself has this angular design that actually kind of reminds me of this graphics card right here. It has more of like a race car kind of angular design to it, along with that little transformer eye looking fan on there. It's a 40 millimeter fan, and it is also completely silent, which I was really happy with. Now, some people will say, oh, that fan doesn't do anything. It's too small to change anything. You're wrong. In fact, most AIO coolers have no cooling over the CPU area, which the VRMs usually depend on to keep them cool. So this will actually help you maintain a more stable overclock than a block without a fan. And finally, my most favorite part of this cooler is the single four pin PWM fan that goes to your CPU fan header. That's it. I'm used to the Corsair H100i, which is my previous water cooler, which had about four wires coming off of it, including the wires coming from the fans themselves. It's just a mess. This is such a clean, concise design that I really, really appreciate it. And one thing that some people may appreciate, some people may hate, is that there are no LEDs on it at all. Those of you clean freaks out there, or those of you that hate RGB for whatever reason, um, this is your cooler because there's nothing. Overall, I'm really a big fan of this matte black and silver design. It is very sleek and it should match just about any build design that you have because black matches just about anything, right? Now I'm on to the performance of this cooler. First thing to note is that my previous cooler I had was Arctic Freezer 33 Esports Edition with a dual fans on it. It was a great cooler, however, I was unable to achieve a steady overclock like I did on my Corsair H100i. Now with this water cooler, despite being 120 millimeters, I was actually able to regain my 4.4 gigahertz overclock at 1.3 volts on my processor. I'm also running this in a very hot case. The Thermaltake V71 that I have is toasty there's almost no airflow in it it does look beautiful but once again it kind of suffocates everything inside and this cooler actually handled it quite well during video rendering this is a 20 minute long render in magix vegas pro i would hit 72 degrees celsius max the average temperature was closer to 68 degrees celsius you'd pretty much see it uh, ramp up to 72 degrees celsius then the fans and pump would really kick in and bring it right back down immediately. So I think there's actually more headroom if I really want to push it. And the other thing I do with my computer is a lot of streaming. That's mainly, you know, broadcasting a 720p 60 stream while playing games such as Planet Side 2, Monster Hunter World, and even a long hour and a half long streaming session while playing a game, I hit a maximum temperature of 67 degrees Celsius. This is so impressive to me. Even on my Corsair H100i, I know I went way above 67 degrees Celsius. I'm, I'm frankly just blown away. This 120 millimeter cooler is performing equally or better than some 240 millimeter coolers. And that kind of brings me into the price. And the price is $65, which puts this right in line with other 120 millimeter all-in-one coolers. However, it performs as good as or better than a lot of 240 millimeter all-in-ones that you see in the market. So I might as well compare it to 240 millimeter prices, which are at least 80, if not well over a hundred dollars. So who is this for? Who is the ideal case? And I think the ideal case for this cooler is somebody who has a pre-built computer. Pre-built computers will often have a motherboard with the bare bones ports on it, which includes fan headers. And it most often will have just a single CPU fan header for that single cheap cooler they have on it. And most water coolers would not be compatible or you have to buy a whole bunch of extenders and headers to make it work. And this would be plug and play. It'd just be as simple as mounting that 120mm radiator. Now the only real limitation is the socket compatibility, which is AM4 and the Intel sockets you see on the screen right now. 
It also comes in multiple flavors such as 240 millimeters, 360 millimeters, and 280 millimeter coolers. If I were to rate this cooler, which I don't really do on this channel, I would say a uh, five out of five. I really cannot find a single flaw with it. The price is right. The performance is amazing. The looks are very sleek and well-designed. The worst part of it is maybe the CPU block. The angular design may not appeal to everybody. And I would actually recommend these coolers to all my friends or family, anybody that has a, a computer and they need to upgrade their cooling for the CPU. I'm gonna recommend an Arctic from here on out. There's, I don't see any competitors to the price and the performance of these coolers. And that's it for this video. My name is Steven. Thank you all so much for watching. Please go below, drop a like, drop a comment, maybe subscribe. That'd be pretty cool, right? And go to that Amazon link. If you buy it through that link, you will help me and Adam out a lot in buying more cool technology. Maybe I can do some kind of head-to-head -head, uh, CPU cooler test with other 120 millimeters or 240 millimeter coolers in the future. That'd be really cool. And also, shout out once again to Arctic for sending me this cooler to begin with. This is a journey that I never expected to turn out so well. You guys are amazing. You make amazing products. And that's it for this video. My name is Steven. You've been watching Tech Dive. I'll see y'all next time.